Hi everyone, Emma here. I'm getting ready to show you how to make these lovely earrings. This is like the third time I start this video. <laughs> Let's hope we get through. The last one just got through just at the back and the end and I was like, nope. Let's do it over. Anyway, I've tried a bunch of different kind of uh, designs of this. I feel like this one is the nicest one coming out. So we use peyote stitch. So let's get started so I can show you. I am using um, this green dragon thread. You can use whatever you have. Um, I do like the uh, fused um, line because we want the pine needles to have some shape to them. So they definitely have shape with that type of line, but you could probably do the same thing using um, Nymo thread, something like that. But you can definitely pose these a little more rounded if you want. So there's that. Um, I'm using a size 11 needle. You can use whatever needle you're comfortable with. There's lots of room for your thread and needle to go through, so that's not an issue. Um, you're going to need two um, six millimeter Preciosa red pearls or whatever red large beads you have to represent the holly berries. I'm using these um, treasures. They are number one Toho treasures and they are called silver lined frosted dark topaz. That's a mouthful, but they're gorgeous. So these um, treasures, number one, they're about equivalent to an 11 OC bead, but they're very much like Delica's where they're very tubular. Um, I like the look of them, but you can use round beads if you have those instead. Then these here are 11 uh, Toho's uh, rounds. Let me double check that if they, no, maybe they're, yeah, I can't remember if they're rounds or not. They kind of look round to me. Um, rainbow lime green. So they have a rainbow um, AB on the outside that you can see when they're all together. Maybe you can see it on this one. You can see that shimmery kind of rainbow color. And then you're going to need some 15 seed beads. These again are, um, I believe, Delica Lime Greens. So let's get started. You're going to need a wingspan and I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, I just did a video, this same video, <laughs> And I got to the end and I didn't have enough thread because I didn't use a wingspan. I used a shorter amount. So I'll tell you, if you use a full wingspan and your arms are not super short or super long, you're going to end up with enough thread to do two earrings. I took half of what I thought I needed and guess what? It didn't work. So I'm using just about a full wingspan right now and that'll give me lots, lots to go. So we are going to start with our middle part here, this area here, and um, you need 16 to start. So let's get those on there. I do have my thread on and I have a stop bead. I don't think I told you that part. I may have too much thread now that I'm looking at this, but there you go. So I put a stop bead on. I just use these as my stop bead. It's You'll see at the end, this is going to be at the top where we put our little clasp and you'll take it off. It won't confuse you, so don't worry. So there's four, five. Six, no, that's seven, I think. Yeah, seven. Eight, nine, ten, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bring it all the way down to the bottom where your stop bead is. And let me tilt the camera so you can see my hands nicely. Let's see if I can get some more light here. Okay, so this is what you have. Now we're going to start our peyote stitch. 
So you're going to start right away with your green 11 0 beads. You're going to skip the first treasure, go through the second one like that. And I hang on to it so that it doesn't get all messed up. And of course it wants to turn around. I'm going to flip it just to make it easier to go in the up position here. There, like that. So that's what you're going to have. Oh, let's in, enlarge this so you can really see. So they're going to be sitting side by side. Get your next 11 0. Go in. You're skipping the first bead and going through the second one. Pull that up. Nice and snug. There's your first two right there. Pick up 11 0. You're coming out of there. You're going to skip your first bead and go through the second one. All the way in like that and you're just going to continue that all the way up and just like that pick up another 11 0 skip the next bead then go through the following bead If I can get that, there we go, like that. Pick up an 11 0. Skip the next. Oh, I've got two on my needle. That happens sometimes. Skip the next bead, go through. The following one and I have my notes here <laughs> it's actually for you guys but I need to get better notepads pick up an 11 0 skip the next bead go through the following one it's getting a bit snug here so try and get my Nail to push the bead open. There we go. Go through just that one like that. Ignore that green stop bead. There's your stop bead. We are going to put a bead here though. And then we're going to go around to this one. So we're going to come down this one. So if you just ignore this stop bead as if it was never there. You would add your bead this way. We're going to turn it around. And we're going to straighten this out. It's all, it's all messed up because I was pushing on the stop bead. Straighten that out. So now you have all your green beads on the one side. Now we're just going to put our green beads on this side. And I apologize, I thought the camera was in focus. My camera works where you can do it, you can set the focus, or you can let it set itself. And I, t when I watch videos where people are changing, letting the camera take the focus, and things are out of view, it just annoys me. So I always set my own focus. It usually works out. We're just filling in the blank spots. So now we're going back down to the bottom. In case you lost track of where we were, we kind of considered the stop bead as the top. See, that's the stop bead here. So this is the bottom of our work. these final two in one more here there ok 
Okay, so that is the end of our peyote and the beginning of our lovely little uh, design. So now, like I, I we are going to do the pine needles. So if you look at it this way, there's the bottom. So we're going to start with two. We're just going to put two for the first one. Then we're going to put a second two, but there's already a bead there. It will make it three. So all the way along, when I say add this many, that's how many beads you add. There's really more beads than that because there's the ones we put during the peyote phase. But the numbers, you're going to put two of each number and it's going to go up. The first one, of course, is is two. We're only going to do that once there. And then we add, let me see. Now I guess we're going to do the two twice and the three. So we're going to do every step twice. So that's two twos, three twos, four twos, five twos. And then when we get to six, we're going to do it for the rest, which ends up being 11 times. I will write that in the description and in a comment and I'll pin it to the top in case you're wondering. So you don't have to flip back into the video to see which step of how many beads. So here's two 11 O's. We're coming out of this bead here. We're going to add a 50 no. So our 50 no is going to be our anchoring bead. So we're going to take this all the way down to the end here. We are going to skip going through the 50 no. We're going to go through the two 11 O's that we just added. And then we're going to go through the treasure as well and pull that snug. And that 15 O will hold all the beads in. So now we're coming out of this uh, brown bead. We're going to go across to the green one through the top in a downward manner. We're going to add two beads here, two 11 O's like that and one 15 O. We're going to bring that, draw it all to the bottom again, like that. Skip the 15, go through the three green 11 O's plus the brown treasure or the golden treasure. Oh, the golden treasure. I found it. It's called Emma's beading. Okay, so we're coming out of just a little bit of silliness there. We're coming out of this golden bead. We're going to go across to this green one and we're going to go down the green one. So we did two twos. We're going to do two threes. So let's do one, two, three, eleven O's and one fifteen O. Draw it all to the bottom. That. Skip the 15 0, go through. I think I did too many there. I think. Let me double check here. There should only be three, so actually we have to go through the twos twice. More than once, I mean. I don't know what it is about this video. I can't. <laughs> I'm just going to take one of these off. I can kind of tell that it's too long. Let's take a look at our sample. So I just took one of those 11 O's off. Okay. So this one here should have three. Oh, it does have four. Well, la di da. Let's see. Uh, that's this side here, so it should be three. Uh, okay. So this one we did. So we did a two, a two. We needed to do a three. Actually, that's a two, because there's already one there. Then we go to three. So 
let me correct that on my little pad here. So we said Ah, that's, I made a mistake there. Okay, let's try that again. Just ignore that whole other part of the video. <laughs> 15 oh, and then go through three 11 o's and one of the treasures. Like that. There, that's better. We're going to cross over. To the green and go down through the green so now we're going to add three 11 o's and one 15 like that skip the 15 o go through the 11 o's and through the treasure there. Pull that snug. Cross over to the other side. Go down through the green bead. Like that. Add three 11 O's. And a 15 0. Bring it down. Skip the 15, go through all your 11 0's and through the gold treasure. Cross over, go down through that 11 0. Going to add, we added three there, three there. So now we're going to do four. One, two, three, four. This one seems really tiny. That one there. It's like it's broken or something. Okay. Four and one fifteen. Bring it down to the end. Like that. Skip the fifteen. Go through all your eleven O's and through that gold bead. Like that. Cross over, go down through this green bead. There, pick up four. I'm just counting to make sure, yeah, four. And a 15. Bring it down to the end. Skip the 15, go through all your beads back up and through the gold treasure. Cross over to the green bead next to it. Now we're going to do five on both sides. One, two, three, four, five, and a 15. Like that. Those 15s are so tiny, aren't they? Okay, so we're going to skip the 15, go through the 11 O's. I hear a whole lot of uh, dog barking in the background. I think one of the neighbors must have gotten a new dog. I don't know why people get dogs and then put them outside. <laughs> like I don't like to be outside in the cold one two three four five 
Let me just, yeah. And then the 15, bring it down. And then the rest are all sixes till you get to the end. So I'll just continue like this. So you can see how it's forming the shape really nicely. Okay, cross over to the green. Now, I think there is a way to do this where you're doing your peyote stitch at the same time as you're adding. Because the first couple of ones that I did, that's how I did them. And you know what? I cannot figure out how I did it. So <laughs> I was like, never mind, let's break it down. So six and one fifteen. Bring it all the way down. Like that. Cross your thread over to this green one. Like that. Pick up six, eleven O's. Okay. Let's see, three, four, five, six, and one fifteen. through that. The other thing I didn't mention that you need is you need your ear wires. And the ones I'm using, these ones here, they're so pretty. I got these at um, Phoebe Craft. They were, um, they're gold plated. So we went for another walk today. It was a little cooler and not as sunny as it was yesterday, but it was still really nice to get out there. More people out walking. Ran into our neighbor walking her dogs. Booger and Beckett and they have a, a foster dog, Lexi. Um, they're, so Beckett is a female. They're bulldogs, I think. And, uh, she loves us. Every time she sees us, my, my neighbor just cracks up. She goes, yeah, I can't walk my dog. They see you and they just plop down waiting for you guys to get closer. It was so hilarious. This big, massive dog. I'm not moving until they get here. Of course, we really shower them with affection. And <laughs> dogs will jump up and lick my face all the time. So, of course, Beckett did that. And she was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. She never does that. I don't understand. I said, I'm so used to it. Dogs do that to me all the time. I said I could tell she wanted to get up there and kiss me. Lick my face. I used to have dogs. <laughs> I had to tell you a story. So when we were in North Carolina, we celebrated Thanksgiving twice. So we did Canadian Thanksgiving and American Thanksgiving. And um, 
the one time we were, so we would have our neighbors, we had um, friends from Pennsylvania that we worked with. So when we had our Canadian Thanksgiving, we would have them over to our place and we'd cook. And then the, um, the guys would play hockey, ball hockey in the uh, parking lot. I don't know where this thread came from. Oh, it's my... I gotta release some of my thread here. They actually, I don't know how they got kids to play hockey with them. If they had, maybe they had extra sticks. I think maybe that might have been it. So the kids had hockey sticks and they were playing in the parking lot. But um, so when it was American Thanksgiving, we went over to their place. We live in the same condo complex. So it wasn't like we had far to walk, <laughs> but, um, so I, you know, American Thanksgiving is so much closer to Christmas than, than Canadian Thanksgiving. So I had a big, big box, like a couple of feet tall, the box was, and inside it was a, like, clear plastic container with um, ornaments that were in the shape of apples and they were they they were styrofoam they had like a cellophane a red cellophane coating over top that was the apple part so we get back we have two dogs we have a corgi and a black lab german short hair pointer Cross. and uh, the corgi was the bossy one and the black lab was the stupid one <laughs> okay I'll do whatever you're doing I come in the house and the, the black lab because of the short haired pointer it, he had a white bib and white paws with like specks of black in it so, and then the corgi had white paws as well. So the, um, come in the house and their muzzles are red. And I'm like, oh my God, something happened, right? And I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm trying to figure out what the heck it is. Okay, I didn't go through this last one, which I needed to. So let's go through this last one show you what I'm doing here so this is the stop bead right here so I need to go through this last one and down through the green on the other side I um I look all over the floor there's like that red cellophane all over the floor so their paws were red their muzzles were red and I'm like thinking they're bleeding or something and that dawned on me. I'm like, oh, it's those apples they got into. And I'm like, wait a minute. And of course, I could see like the styrofoam apples that were left over. They were totally intact. They were not like, there were no teeth marks in them. They had picked <laughs> all the cellophane off of the apples, styrofoam apples without damaging the styrofoam and of course they they were red from the dye and I looked inside that box and like everything was still inside the box I don't know I still to this day don't know how they got in the box got the crap out of the box without knocking things over or whatever yeah we could not leave the corgi out with it like in the house he would destroy something every time I came home one time he destroyed the carpet he picked all the little fibers out of one area like a hole in the carpet the weave of the carpet was still there there was just all these little things I saved them because we were renting 
and I didn't want to lose my security deposit. So when when we went to move, I took like a little thing and, and wove them back in and fluffed them up. And I got my deposit back a couple hundred dollars. Oh, yeah, he was terrible. Okay, so done. Look. Oh, so let's add. Um, let's add our loop. So you need 10 beads for your loop that you're going to hook onto your earrings. So there's five. One, two, three, four, five for a total of 10. So you're coming out of here. Let's go down through this one here. Like that. There's your loop. This is your stop bead. We're going to take this out in a bit and just slide it over. Okay. So now what you want to do is we're going to add our our um, holly berry. So I'm going to add a bit of a stem, which is one of these darker beads here. Like that. So that will be our stem. And then there's usually a little kind of pointy thing at the end of your berries. That's going to be the 15 o. And again, the 15 o is going to attach our berry, our bead, six millimeter pearl. So skip the 15 o, go through the um, the brown bead there. Oh, let's just pull that through. It's not going to be all the way through, but we'll fix that. So just hang on to your 15 o and bring, pull your thread and it will cinch it up. So now we are going to go up through the loop and go through all the beads. We're going to come out on the other end and we're going to add the second one, and if you want to add a third one, feel free. I I um I think if I had four millimeter red pearls, I'd use them and uh, do three instead. I like threes, but they are too big. The six millimeters for putting three as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so pick up your stem again, like that. Then your pearl. And a 15 no. So that's what you're gonna put on there. Slide that down. And skip your 15 no, go through your pearl and through your brown bead. And again, you're going to hang on to your 15 o and pull your thread. And that will cinch it up nice like that. Like that. There. This, um, I feel like there's some missing on this one here. Yeah, it looks shorter. It looks like I put two extra on there. It's, I can't, I can't win. This is, I seriously did a full other video and I've done this a couple of times now. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to tie this. Put a knot in here, like that. So let's grab the thread bridge there, put your thread around it, hang on to that, pull your needle through tight, and go through your beads. 
and I'm going to go down through a couple of beads down here. I'll tell you why because in an earlier one I did it just in the loop and it um, the tail of the thread actually came came out when I was doing the next one. So let's cut this and we will weave our other thread through. So take the stop bead off and thread that. Oops, flatten that a bit. <clears throat> Yeah, dogs are so much fun. <laughs> I when I'm so I I bead when I'm watching TV and at a safety I will take my bead tray and put it on top of the fridge so the cat can't get at it. And normally I take all my needles off my thread if you know, if I have stuff on my desk so the cat can't get into it. The cat, this cat, has never gone on the fridge ever, ever, ever. Guess what happened? We're in bed and we hear a big crash. So I go running downstairs. He's like taken off from the kitchen. He tried to jump on the fridge. And two things happen. We have these plastic cutting boards on the counter. So when he went to jump, the cutting board slid backwards and he went sliding. Well, let me, let me put a knot in here. And, um, and then of course, because my bead tray was there, look, see, this is what I was talking about. I didn't mean to do that. Let me see if I can get it back in there. Not likely. Let me just clip that. So not a good idea to put your knot in your loop. As as for like a structural thing, it's not a big deal because it's going on an earring. It's not like it's part of a clasp. But yeah, so my bee tray got knocked off the fridge and um everything <laughs> as you can imagine beads flying everywhere Ugh. I went into the the living room to talk to the kitty and say how come you were a bad kitty he's sprawled out laying like he's lounging like he's been there all night I'm like nice try cat you think I'm not stupid? Oh, it was too funny. That's the only time that's ever happened. So then we start talking, Jen and I start talking about our cat, uh, Jack's, or um, Buddy. Buddy was a black. So I didn't realize black cats are called Bombay cats. And um, there's a whole bunch of stuff about these cats. And uh, that's what Buddy was. Buddy wanted to be high all the time. So he wanted to be on top of things. And he was, you could point to something like a, a shelf or whatever. And he'd just look at it. And then like you wouldn't even hear him land. He was so light on his paws. So here is the ear wire. So I'm just going to open this up a bit here. And we'll hook it on to there. Yeah, he was amazing. So he used to, <laughs> we'd come home and he'd be on top of the cupboards in the kitchen. <laughs> it's like, dude, get down. And he was like, he would have, 
if a cat can have a smirk, and I'm sure he, people that have cats know this, he'd have like this confident smirk on his face, like, hey, check me out, look at where I got. So there, now if you want to, you can, you know, when you're putting these on, you can kind of crisscross it so that they kind of stay together a bit. But um, I think that should be good. So, there's the other earring. That's neat. Ta da! <laughs> Take care, everybody. And we will see you in the next video. Bye for now.